First Things Foundation, it does aid. We aid people. I hate this concept, okay? But I want to hear from a symbolic thinker and someone, I, uh, an Orthodox brother, but I, just a person who's made some sense out of all this. Our concept is, is that aid is for you. So when Jonathan Pajot goes down to the food bank, it's for you. And then, and here's why, is because when you go down, if it's a sacrifice of some sort, in other words, if you're going into the ground in some ways as a seed, what's happening is, is you're being reborn through the process of aid. And so we can't lose track of that. And, and so our whole model is that you're not really going to aid somebody else unless you're in some sort of modus of, of I don't like, the, suffering is the word for an Orthodox Christian. For I think a modern person, like, I don't really get it. You, you whip yourself or something. But what you have to do, so we go and live right alongside everybody who supposedly is suffering. And then we live just like they're doing. And then we spend two years. Nobody wants to do this, Jonathan. <laughs> Nobody wants to go do this. But what happens is when you come out the other side, what you did is probably a project or five or 10. But what you really did is you, you did this thing, like Kant talks about glasses. You really stripped off a pair of glasses that you thought you had on and you become somebody new. And then that is also an outcome of aid. Mm. And it should be. And where a project doesn't have that happening, and I again, I pick on some people, but it, I love people who want to help. But if you're taking a bunch of kids for a weekend to a foreign country and they're putting up a wall and then they're flying back home, there's no, there's no down in that. So, so they can't come up. So is, am I crazy? Can you speak to this? No, I agree. You know, when, when, when I, I spent seven years in, in Africa and uh, I work with Mennonites, actually. So I work with Mennonite Central Committee. And the reason why I worked with Mennonites was because exactly of that perception that they had. Like they had a very similar perception to what you're talking about. That okay. is, we lived, so we had no salary. We had uh, mm -hmm. a stipend and we lived in local neighborhoods. You know, we were the only white people in our neighborhood for years. And so, and, and so, and you, and also they say, they basically tell us for the first six months, you actually don't do anything. What? You just learn the language. Me? You learn That's the language. What? You figure out like where you are, build a community, build relationships. And then after a, a, a several months, like it, it's obviously flexible, but after sure. several months, then you actually put your foot out and start to see if there are some things you can connect together. Um, and that has been really like for us, it was amazing because all that time, like you said, the first few months, you you have the time to break right. down your, your prejudice, break right. the prejudice you didn't even know you had, right. break down the you know, the, your comfort zone, break down all of that. So that when you finally have friends and a community and a little bit of connection, uh, and you've also been able to discern the people who are just sharks, who are just want to get something from you. You start to kind of find your way to see pearls and people of value and people who are, are sincere. Um, and then like the project we built in, in Congo, uh, you know, uh, since until COVID, I don't know if it's still going to continue, but until COVID, it was still going. And this was like, and this is 15 years after we're gone. And it was yeah. just run by local people doing their own thing. It's just right. because we had just, and it was, it's not a tribute to us. It was a tribute to yeah. the time that we spent to just figure out like, hey, this is a really good person. And like, I'm going to invest in this person. And then, the, like you said, you, you put the seed in the right uh, earth and then it just grows on its own, you know. So you saw that. That's fantastic. I didn't even know we were doing the Mennonite thing. We were talking about Cyril and Methodius when we got very first started with this. That's fascinating. I didn't even know. Well, that. Cyril and Methodius are a great example of exactly that because they basically listened and, and paid attention and then offered to, offer, offered to the Slavs something which was both theirs, like both the Slavs, but also uh, added value to what the Slavs already had. Right. It was like, we're going to give you a written language, yeah. you know, in your own language. And yeah. it's like, you can now use this, not just for liturgy. This yeah. has a whole lot of other applications, like this very powerful thing that they offered. And, uh, and so I think that that's a, I think that's a great example. Yeah. Using serial lit. When you like, if I go to Africa, it, it's like, if I go to Congo, for example, that's where we went most of the time we were in Kenya as well, but like, especially in Congo, it's obvious that there's a massive difference and mm -hmm. there's definitely something that I have that can be added value to the people who are there. And there's something that they have that is definitely going to be an added value to me. And so in that relationship, 
there's like this mutual learning and this mutual yeah. exchange, which I think, and it's also because, because the reality is that I'm coming from a place where that has more resources in terms of money, like just mm -hmm. in terms of the rich being a rich and giving to the poor. Mm -hmm. And so that's a reality, which, which, which we don't want to, we can't ignore. And so coming in as a rich person and then being in communion with people who are, who, who have more poverty and trying to find ways to be able to plant seeds so that they grow, not just dropping money on people or, yes, you know, or, yeah. or also thinking that the fact that I have money means that I can tell everybody what to do, but ra rather trying to find points of communion where my resources and your potential are going to create something awesome, right? If you only, it's like you meet someone and you know, right? You meet someone and you're like, if this guy or this woman this is had resources they would knock it out of the park and you just see it and you see the other person who's like oh this guy just wants he just thinks that he just wants money or just wants he thinks that it's, that's all that counts but you see someone who's already doing something who's like you know hustling and really trying to make things work it's commute is it's like a pillar in their community and you think wow that person had resources they would just we have a name for those cats we call them impresarios and really what our job is to hunt them and find them. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's exactly I totally agree with that. Like then, all you do is try to find good people and then yeah. the rest is going to is going to happen.